Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome again to our online worship. We're so happy that we can continue come together to worship the Lord. And as we come to seek Him, just God promised that we will fi find Him. And why not let's all come together to continue to worship the Lord as we hear some of the ministries that needs our concerns and prayer. This month, as we enter into a new month and enter into a new season, our third season, uh, why not let's, uh, we are entering to a spiritual checkup month. Go home. I don't know how you are doing in your spiritual life. Are you growing in your relationship with God? So we would greatly encourage you for the coming four months, let's come together and evaluate ourselves and prepare ourselves uh -huh, to help us to grow spiritually. Huh? So I greatly encourage you to uh, do the four spiritual disciplines that we need to do. Uh -huh. First, we encourage you to uh, take the time to read the Bible, which is our listening room time, and to continue uh, participate in our scripture memory and finish the read through the Bible and encourage everyone to join the cell group and get involved in the church ministry. Uh -huh. For our, we need to grow uh, in our relationship with God. Go, huh? Just like in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18, it goes, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Go, may the Lord help us that each one of us would continue grow in God's grace and knowledge. Go. And for the listening room time for this month is already out. Go, and we have already posted in our group line. And you may... Uh, Check it every day. It is on the notes. Uh, we continue to encourage everyone to spend time with God go, and make this our priority amidst our business. Go. I believe that as we come together to read and meditate God's word, God has word for each one of us. Go. So let's continue to expect great things from God as we seek him every day. And praise the Lord. Huh? Congratulations again for the last season. huh? There are around 56 people who have finished the scripture memory for this season. And Canaan, 14 people participated. And Uku Ministry, 11 people. And Nankan Ministry, 31 people. So we continue to encourage brothers and sisters, let's continue. Hide God's word in, in our hearts, knowing that God's words are living and, and powerful. They, they, have, they are the greatest weapon, the most powerful weapon that God has given to us. God. Okay, and we will start our 40-day uh, fast and prayer campaign. God. And this time, our team is praying through the Psalms. God. And this will start on September 20 until October 29. So let's prepare our hearts as we enter into this journey. God, huh? And there are four things that we would be doing. God. First, we would fast and pray for a day, uh, three meals per week. Second, we would pray the Psalms every day. And third, join our online prayer meeting. And fourth, share life with others in the cell. Uh, and uh, by, we would be uh, giving out and sharing the, the scripture verses with you uh, as we, the time comes. Uh, okay. And then for our tithes and offering, uh, let's continue to honor the Lord by giving uh, to, to the Lord, knowing that everything that we have comes from God's and it all belongs to God. Uh, and there are two ways for you to, to give. Uh, first, you may drop your tithes and offering in the church offering box, or you can uh, transfer the money uh, through ATM or through bank. Uh, and please take note for Canaan and Uku, you have uh, this account number. Huh? You have the same bank but different account number. Huh? And Nankan, you have also a different account number. So please take note of this. And please remember, upon transferring your, your uh, offering, remember to notify our pastors and give the following information. So your name, offering number. Second, the last five digits of your bank account numbers. And third, the amount of donations that you have transferred. Huh? So, brothers and sisters, why not let's take some time and let's pray for all these ministries that we have, uh, that may the Lord continue to um, bless and establish the work uh, that the church is doing. Uh, that may the Lord continue in this coming month. Uh, may God continue 
draw each one of us into his presence that will continue grow in his grace God, and that God would continue to stir up a hunger and longing for more of him huh, as we come together to grow in his grace and knowledge so why not let's all come together and let's uh, lift up this morning prayer um, message into God's loving hands may God once again uh, open our hearts our ears that will be able to receive and hear his word as he speak to us so why not let's all come together and pray Yes, dear Heavenly Father God, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for another wonderful day, Lord, that we can all gather together in your presence to worship you, Lord, knowing, Lord, that you alone are God, Lord, and we welcome you here right now in this place. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, Lord. You are the God who is in control of everything, Lord, amidst all the troubles and sufferings that surround us, Lord. We know, Father God, that you are there, Lord. Continue watching over us protecting us lord jesus lord we continue and trust lord all these things into your loving hands lord especially during this pandemic lord we pray father god lord that may you continue reveal yourself to your people lord reassure them father god that you are in control lord we pray father god that may you have mercy and lord may you stop this um pandemic this virus father god um from, from spreading, Lord Jesus. Lord, we also remember our loved ones right now, Lord, especially those who are in the Philippines right now, Lord. We continue to ask, Lord, that may you remember mercy, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray, Father God, that may you protect them from, from any harm, Lord Jesus. We pray, Father God, for those who have been infected with, with this virus, Lord Jesus. We pray, Father God, that your healing grace and power right now would come upon these people. Lord, may you be near them at this time, Lord. Let them know, Father God, that you are their hope. You are their, their, their healer. You are their deliverer, Lord Jesus. Comfort them. Uplift them. Increase their faith, Lord Jesus. Let them know, Father God, that nothing is impossible for you, Lord. That you are the God who is able to help us in times of our needs lord we continue to look to you lord we also continue to pray father god for our our relationship with you lord may you continue to draw each one of us closer and deeper to you every day lord jesus continue to stir up a hunger a longing father god in our hearts wanting to know you more lord jesus lord may you remove any obstacles that stand in our way lord that that hinders us from from seeking you lord jesus lord we pray father god that may you come and have your way in us Change us, transform us, Father God, into your likeness, Lord, so the world would know and, and see you, Lord, in our life and give back glory to you, Lord. And as we come here this morning, Lord Jesus, Lord, we pray, Father God, that may you continue soften our hearts, give us a humble heart, a sensitive ears, Father God, to the words that you are going to share with us this morning, Lord. Lord, we pray, Father God, that may you come and have your way in us, Lord Jesus. Lord, may you open our eyes, open our ears. We want to see and we want to hear you, Lord. Once again, we entrust, Lord Jesus, this morning, um, Speaker Reverend Joseph, trying to your loving hands, Lord. May you continue to be with him, empower him, use him, Lord, as he speaks to us, Lord. We praise you and we thank you, Lord, for all the things that you're going to do. We pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, brothers and sisters, if you have your Bible, why not? Let's all come together and open our Bible to the book of Colossians. It's in the New Testament. Colossians chapter 2, huh? verse 8 to 15. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8 to 15. So why not? Let's all come together and let's read it. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy which depends on human traditions and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in the bodily form. And you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. In him, you were also circumcised in putting off of the sinful nature, not with the circumcision done by the hands of men, but with the circumcision done by Christ. Having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through your faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead, 
when you were dead in your sin and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. Having canceled the written code with its regulation that was against us and that stood opposed us, he took it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. As we enter into a new month, the month of September, we will be having a new topic. And this, for this month, our topic is, I am complete in Christ. Huh? Just as in Colossians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, For in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. And we're so happy this morning to have um, Reverend Joseph try to share with us God's word. And he would be sharing with us, we have been made complete. So why not let's give the rest of the time to our reverend. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome again to our online worship celebration. Now, we are now on the month of September. And from September to December is our third season for 2021. Okay, and that means to say that we will continue to learn who we are in Christ in this coming four months. You know, it is important for us to know who we are in Christ. Knowing who we are in Christ empower us to be able to pursue the purpose and the ordained destiny that God has given to us. And so, as we come before the Lord, especially this month, okay, we are going to have uh, something that would help us to be able to let God shape us and then to direct us to the destiny that God wants us to do, to the ministry that God has prepared for us, not only for these coming four months, but also for the coming years. Okay. So we will be having our 40 days of fast and prayer okay, that will start on uh, September 20 until October 29. Okay. You know, in the Bible, when we uh, look at uh, the life of Moses, when God is going to use Moses, you know, he brought Moses to the desert to tend shift for the uh, next 40 years of his life. And in these 40 years, God has been shaping him and directing him. And after 40 years, God called him to lead the Israelites out of Egypt to the promised land. We also see uh, the life of Jesus when after Jesus was baptized, when he came out to minister, the Spirit of God led him to the desert for 40 days to be tested. And so in these 40 days of fasting and prayer, God shaped him, God directed him, and God empowered him. And so I believe that if we go into these 40 days and join in, God is going to shape us, God is going to empower us, and God is going to direct us to the ministry and to the work that he wants us to accomplish uh, in this coming four months and even in the coming years. Okay? So what do we do right now? Okay, we wish need to have some uh, uh, first is preparation we need to prepare ourselves physically by making sure that we are physically fit second we need to prepare our hearts emotionally by uh, focusing on uh, what is coming and anticipating what god will be doing in our lives and for spiritually okay, maybe we need to start to come before the lord and seek his face to know what we are going to pray and uh, to condition Okay, our physical or our emo uh, emotional as well as our spiritual condition to go into these 40 days. And not only we need to have preparation, second, we need to plan for our uh, fasting and praying also. We need to determine when we will be going to fasting and uh, the place of fasting and what are some of the issues that we could bring to the Lord during these times of fasting. And I believe we will experience supernatural transformation in our lives as we come before the Lord as we draw near to God. Okay? May God uh, call us and may we experience God okay, in this coming 40 days. Okay? Now this month, the month of uh, September, now we, will, we are going to learn another aspect of who we are in Christ aside from what we have been uh, uh, learning and uh, uh, sharing in the last uh, six uh, to eight months. Okay? And uh, one of the things that uh, the Bible tells us of who we are okay, is recorded in uh, Colossians 2, verse 10. Okay? So in Colossians 2, verse 10, he said, And in Christ you had been brought to fullness. 
He is the head over every power and authority. Okay. Now, what does it mean to be full? Okay. What does it mean by fullness in Christ? Now, fullness in Christ means that uh, in Christ we are complete. That in Christ we lack nothing. That everything that we need to have to live a meaningful and satisfying life is available to us in Christ Jesus. And in Him, all that we need and can have is available in Him. And so what the Bible is saying that, you know, becoming a Christian, God has already completed us. God has already given us the fullness of life so that we could be able to enjoy, to live out a different kinds of life, a meaningful and satisfying life. Okay, That is why when Paul wrote to the Christians in Colossians, uh, let me read to you chapter 2, verse 6 to 7. Okay, Now, this is what he said from uh, the New Living Translation. He said, And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow Him. Let your roots grow down into Him, and let your lives be built on Him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. Now, what Paul is saying is that as we accept Christ Jesus as our Lord, we need to continue to follow Him. We need to let our root grow down into Him. You know, from this verse twice, we see that Him, the word Him, into Him to follow Him, okay, and build up on Him, okay? So that, you know, when our lives are being built up on Him, then our faith will grow strong. And not only that our faith will grow strong, at the last uh, uh, sentence he said, and you will overflow with thankfulness. Now, what kinds of life okay, will flow a thankful heart out of uh, our, li our lives? It is when that life is experiencing a life that is satisfying and the life that is fulfilling. Okay? And so, from these kinds of life, thankfulness would be able to flow through us. And so, in other words, you know what the Bible is telling us is that no matter where we are, no matter who we are, or what is our condition right now, or circumstances, we could always experience a completeness of life, a fullness of life that God has given to us, and we could enjoy these kinds of life. But sadly to say, you know, a lot of us don't believe it, and that's why, you know, sometimes we try okay, to add something out of what God has been given us, thinking that, you know, uh, we lack something that as if God cannot bring upon us or cannot complete us, just like what the Colossians Christians had been experiencing. And so that's why Paul wrote this epistle, okay, the letter of Col Colossians, okay, to warn them of this danger and at the same time to correct them of some of the things that they have received, that they have believed in, that uh, hinders them from experiencing the fullness of God. So why not let us go back to the passage that we have read okay, from Colossians chapter 2, verse 8 to verse 15. Okay, Let us read again and let the Word of God speak to us. You know, a lot of times when we read the Bible uh, once, you know, some of them we don't understand much. But when we read it again, so it will help us to understand more of what God is telling us or saying to us to, uh, today. So in verse 8, it said, See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the basic principle of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. And in Him, you were also circumcised in putting off of the sinful nature, not with the circumcision done by the hands of men, but with the circumcision done by Christ. Having been buried with Him in baptism and raised with Him through your faith in the power of God who raised Him from the dead, when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all of our sins. Having canceled the written code, with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed us, he took it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and the authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his words. Okay. And so from this passage, 
we go back again to verse 8. This is uh, the warning of Paul to those uh, Christians in Colossians. In verse 8, he said, see to it. Now, what does it mean by see to it? What Paul is saying is that we need to be aware. He said that look out, be aware, watch out, take heed, or take note, or be aware of. Now, what is it that Paul told them to be aware? He said that be aware that no one takes you captive or enslave you through hollow and deceptive philosophy which depends on human traditions and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. In other words, he said, we need to take, uh, uh, we need to, at the lookout, we need to be aware, we need to watch out on things that we have heard that had enslaved us, those philosophy that uh, had affected us in living our Christian life. Now, when Paul speaks about philosophy, okay, he doesn't mean that uh, a philosophy doesn't mean an academic subject that could be studied in the university. You know, the word philosophy is sometimes used okay, to refer to a worldview. Now, what is worldview? It is how we look at this world. It is a set of convictions about the meaning of life that is derived from what we see, what we feel, and what we are experiencing. It is something that we believe in. Okay, how we look at things. Okay, and so Paul said that we need to be careful, careful of those philosophies, those uh, uh, viewpoint, or those what we call uh, principles that we accepted or conviction that we believe in, which is hollow and deceptive, because they depend on human traditions, and they are what comes from here. It mentioned about. Uh, the basic principle of this world. Now, where does this basic principles of this world come from? It did not come from Christ, but it comes from the devil. So, in other words, there are a lot of mga worldviews. There are a lot of convictions. There are a lot of how we see things that is not according to God, that sometimes it affected us and it hindered us from experiencing the fullness of God. For example, for non-Christians, you know, there are a lot of mga worldviews that has been affecting their lives. For example, recently I have uh, uh, watched a video, okay, uh, from a uh, Indian uh, spiritual leader that has been speaking to a crowd. And so this uh, religious leader said, he said, you know, uh, the wisest people, who are the wisest people in the world? And he said, Chinese are the wisest people in the world. Now, you know why? Because it is only the Chinese who was able to set up a bank in heaven. Okay? You know, the Americans, they were not able to do this. But the Chinese, they were able to do this. Now, why? You know, whenever uh, some guys would die, Chinese people died, what do they do? You know, they would always burn money, a certain kind of paper money. Okay? And so this money goes up and it goes to that bank so that those people who are in heaven yung mga relatives, so they would go to the bank and withdraw money so that they have something to use in heaven. And you said, he said, you know, this is you know very clever idea. And even Americans was not able to set up banks in heaven. Not only that, he said, you know, the Chinese, okay, the ghosts in Chinese, so they are the most obedient ghosts in all the world. Why? Because every year they only come out during. Uh, the Chinese uh, calendars on, during July, okay? And so, uh, recently, we are seeing a lot of mga people would be uh, worshipping, they would be burning money because it is what we call the ghost month, isn't it? He said that all the ghosts of Chinese ghosts, they are very obedient because, you know, they know when to come out. And then when they come out, you know, the people would just offer to them even a chicken legs and even yung mga me or whatever it is. You know, they will be satisfied. And after a month, what do these ghosts do? They go back again, and they wait another year to come out. It is not like the ghosts in other nations that, you know, every day they are going around disrupting the life of people. And so, this is where, you know, people believe in. And this is what we see. So, because of this belief, you know, all people are living in fear during the ghost month. So, they would postpone a lot of all the decisions or big events that they are going to do in their lives. For example, when they are going to get married, okay, they will not uh, be doing it in this month. When they are uh, uh, 
uh, moving house or buying house, you know, they will not do this. Even in business, they will not uh, uh, go in and uh, have contract, big contracts during this month because they are all afraid that during this month, all the ghost, Chinese ghosts will come out and they will bring havoc or this, uh, uh, destruct a lot of things. And that is why they need to offer again and again. And so, because of this belief, you know, a lot of people live in fear. And even for us Christians, as we see and hear what they are saying, sometimes, you know, we are also afraid. We think that, okay, this month, especially, there would be more ghosts, okay, that is around, or the spirit that is around us, than in other months. But all of these are, comes from what? Traditions? Or it comes from ideas from the devil? We don't know. But we know that it affected the lives of a lot of people. Now, for us Christians, in the same way, you know, a lot of times, a lot of things has affected us in experiencing the fullness of God, the love of God, and pursuing the purpose of God in our lives. And so, it always brings a lot of fear. And sometimes, uh, as if we need to do something in order for us to experience more of God in our lives. For example, okay, we're going to have our 40 days of fast and prayer, isn't it? You know, some people would think that, why do we need to fast and pray? Because it is only when we fast and pray that God is going to listen and answer our prayer. Without fasting and prayer, you know, God will not listen to our prayers. You know, this is something that what, is not, what the Bible does not teach us. For the Bible tells tell us that us and you will receive, isn't it? No matter you fast and pray or you just pray because our God is a God who listens. And so a lot of times, we go into extra effort trying to do this, trying to fast, thinking that when I fast, then God is going to listen more to what I am saying or the prayer that I prayed would be answered. Now, this is not what the Bible said. And that's why, you know, it always bring, uh, brought pressure to us. Some people think that, you know, we need to speak in tongue. Uh, to be able to speak in tongue would be more spiritual. They would be more powerful in their prayer. But you know, the Bible did not teach us this. The Bible said, whatever you bind will be bind for us. Whatever you release will be released on us. Every prayer, no matter you pray in our every tongue, kinds of language, or speaking in tongue or praying in tongue, is as effective as any prayer. Because our God is a God who listens to our prayer. And so all of this sometimes would bring mga uh, uh, concern that we want something and we want it because as if it adds something in our lives. A lot of people would not miss Sunday worship. Why? Because they think that if they don't come on Sundays, you know, the following week, God is going to punish them. God will not be blessing them and they will miss out on a lot of things. And so they just come in order for them to fulfill something and to get something out of it. And they are not enjoying the life that God has given to us, enjoying the presence of God in worship. And so Paul tell them, he said that we need to be aware of it. We should never let all those enslave us. Then in fact, you know, God has already given to us a fullness of life. And so in verse 9 to 15, Paul tell us three things that Jesus has done in order for us to experience the fullness of God without any other things without adding other things and that in what God has done we could always experience the fullness of God okay so what is this did Jesus do in order for us to experience completeness or fullness of life in him okay now the first thing that we see in verse 9 to 10 okay let's go back again to verse 9 and 10 in verse 9 and 10 here it says Paul said for in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form and you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. Here it mentioned about Christ. He has the fullness of the deity. It lives in the body of the form. In other words, you know, when Jesus came, his, he embodied 100% the nature of God and 100% the nature of a human being. And so he, is not, uh, he did not come as a human, half deity and half human, but 100% God and 100% man. And so the 100% uh, God 
is contain the fullness of who God is. In other words, you know, Jesus is God. Whatever we see and learn about who God is and what He had, all could be found in Jesus. And in other words, there's nothing that we will find, uh, not God, in Jesus. Because in Jesus, He embodied the fullness of God. And in verse 10, He said that, and we have been given this fullness in Christ. When we become Christian, God gave us not only eternal life, not only a new life that is eternal, but He has given us Himself. He said, I came that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. Now, how does this abundant life come to us? It is because not only that God has given us a new life, but He has given us His life. And that's why He lived in us through the Holy Spirit. Okay. And so, here it says that, you know, the very life that we have is the very life that God is given to us. You know, in Matthew, it says that uh, God is with us. Emmanuel is His name. And God is with us. And if God is with us and in us, all that we need, all that is lacking, would be given and would be fulfilled by Jesus. All that we need whenever we come to the Lord because He is there, we will be able to experience the fullness. We would lack nothing, no matter it is physical needs, emotional needs, or our spiritual needs. Okay, let me share with you a story. Okay. Okay, there was a uh, mother by the name of Sophia. Uh, her husband was named John. He was a very fervent uh, a soul winner, a uh, zealous soul winner. Okay. And he spent his short life preaching on the streets, okay, in parks and in halls and in theater. And whenever he could, he would go and he would preach the word of God. But at age 27, he contracted typhoid and quickly he died. Leaving Sophia, Ironside with two small boys and no income. And one of the boys by the name of Harry, who become uh, the famous pastor of Moody Memorial Church, he watched his mother closely and see, you know, how God has been working in the lives of his mother. On one occasion, he recalled that uh, there are a group of people who came okay, to their house. Okay, so in their house, you know, Sophia uh, prepared supper for them. But Sophia's cupboard was nearly bare, konti na lang. But she scrubbed everything that he could, and he made a meal, and he was able to offer this group of mga visitors. And after they went home, you know, the cupboard wala nang laman. So how are they going to uh, live or food? What, where are they going to get their food? But when the guest lived in one of the plates, when he opened it, he was able to find what? He was able to find a $10 bill, okay, inside it. Now, this is a vast sum in those days, $10 bill. And so with eyes full of tears, she called two of his sons, and then he offered thanks to God, and he praised God, and he thanked God for his provision. And after a few days, when uh, the money has been spent, again, the cupboard was empty again. And so Sophia, in that morning, he gathered two of his sons to the table for breakfast. But their plate was empty. But what they have is only water. And so he said, boys, let us come before the Lord. Let us give thanks for the provision of God and how God uh, provided for us. Okay? And this is what he prayed. He said, Lord, Father, you had promised in your word that your bread shall be given and your water shall be sure. Right now, Lord, we have our water, but we don't have our bread. And we believe that you will be able to supply our bread or anything that would take the place of this bird. And in Jesus' name, amen. So after that prayer, suddenly they heard a knock. And so when they went out to sea, there was a man okay, outside. And this man said, Mrs. Ironside, he said, you know, I'm very sorry okay, because I know that you, know, you have made a dress for my wife. But you know, we don't have the money, so until now, we were not able to pay you the money. But you know, right now, we have a very good harvest of potato. And so we are wondering if we could uh, use potato in, uh, in, uh, uh, in paying for the debt that we have. And uh, so we just want to give you these two sacks of potato. And Sophia said, indeed, indeed, you can do this. And so in a few minutes, 
the potatoes were sizzling in the frying pan, and the boys had seen how God has provided for their needs. You know, it's remind me of the passage that we have memorized last season. I don't know if you remember uh, Psalms 37 verse 25. Okay, let me quote with you in uh, Good News Bible. Okay, so this would let me you know that I'm also memorizing the Bible. Okay, so Psalms 37 verse 25, he said, okay, I have lived, uh, I'm old now, I have lived a long time, and I have never seen good people abandoned by the Lord or their children begging for bread. Why? Because God supply all our needs. May God help us. A lot of times when we are afraid that we lack something, you know, it would uh, compel us to do more than we need, we can do. And then we start to trust other things in order to fill up what is lacking. But in the Bible, it tells us that in Christ, you know, He has already given us the fullness in Him so that in every need, as long as we come to the Lord, He will provide for us. Okay? So the first thing that we need to remember is that God make us complete. He give us His fullness because He has gifted us with His own life. He has given us His own life, not only eternal life, but when He is in us, all resources are available for us. You know, there was one song that I remember. Okay, the lyrics said that, you know, we come, we want not the gift, but the giver. You know, if we have the gift, one day, you know, it would be uh, used up. But if we have the giver, then the gift will be always present in us. And so, God has given us not only the gift of life, but He has given us His own life, living in us, so that His grace is more than sufficient. Whenever we come to Him, we will experience His provisions on us, physically, emotionally, or spiritually. Now, the second thing that uh, Paul said God has done, not only that uh, through salvation, He has given us Himself, He lives in us, and He continued to provide for our needs. In verse 11, okay, let's read this passage again. He said that in Him you were also circumcised in putting off of the sinful nature, not with the circumcision done by the hands of men, but with the circumcision done by Christ. You know, in the Old Testament, God requires His people to uh, go to the rite of circumcision, okay? To cut off the skin, to be separated by this world, and that they belong to God, okay? And so, for us as Christians in the New Testament, God never required that we need to go through the rites of circumcision. But rather, when we become Christian, Jesus did something, what we call by a spiritual circumcision on our hearts, not on our skin, but on our hearts. And this circumcision, uh, the effect of this circumcision, special, uh, spiritual circumcision is, he said that uh, you were also circumcised in putting off of the sinful nature. It is putting off, it is uh, removing okay, the sinful nature that is in our lives. We know one thing that all of us had been born with a sinful nature. And because we have this sinful nature, that is why it controls us. That is why He dictates how we need to live our lives. You know, we notice even a kids, a small kids, when they were uh, growing up, you know, nobody uh, tell them to lie, they would lie. Nobody tell them to do a lot of some of the things that is wrong, but they will be doing it. Okay, why? Because of the sinful nature that is inside them. So the sinful nature would always dictate so that they will not be able to do what needs to be done. It is like what Paul had experienced in Romans. He said this, he said, the good that I want to do, I'm not doing it. But the very uh, evil that I don't want to do, I keep on doing because there is okay, the law of sin that is inside me. So Paul experienced something in his life that, you know, there is that sinful nature that always enslaves us, that always uh, lead us, direct us, our lives. And that is why we are continually sinning. You know, this is what we experience. A lot of times we know what is right, but we are not doing it. We know something that we need to not to do, but instead we do a lot of them. We know we should not get angry, but we do. We know that revenge should be 
uh, reserved for God to do, but we do. We know that it is uh, sinful to hate people, but we do. And we know that, you know, uh, loving other people is the command of God, but we don't. You know, all of those things we know, but we cannot control it. We cannot do otherwise because we are slave to sin. Okay. But when we become Christian, what God did is, what Jesus did, is, you know, he had this circumcision in our hearts. He put off the sinful nature. And through his death, we belong to God right now. And because we belong to God, we don't belong to sin. And sin is no more our master. Our sin has been forgiven, and we belong to God, and Jesus right now is our master. And that is why what we listen to is Jesus. In other words, no matter what, you know, we have the power to resist evil. We have the power to say no to some of the things that Satan has been dictating or our sinful nature has been uh, leading us. And so the second thing that Jesus did in our lives when we become Christians not only he gave us our, uh, himself so that in every way, you know, he is always there to provide for our needs. Second, and through his death, okay, we had been released from the power of sin. We have been forgiven. That's why sin no more reign on our body, but Christ reign on us. And in other words, we could always say no. That is why when Jesus said you need to be perfect, us, your heavenly Father is perfect. And sometimes we always think that, well, no one is perfect. Of course, no one is perfect. But God has already released us so that when we trusted God, we will not be enslaved or be controlled by the power of sin. We could be able to do what is right and we could be able to do according to the will of the Father. I remember when I was a kid, a movie by the name of uh, Robocop. I don't know if you know about this movie. Now, if you know this movie, well, okay, you are uh, magka-level tayo ng age. <laughs> if you don't know this, well, it is more than 30 years, 40 years of a movie. Okay. Now, I remember it very clearly because in this movie, okay, it is about a company. Okay, they came out with uh, uh, machines that they could be able to, uh, to, to put it in a person so that he will be half machine and half person and he will become a robot. Uh, a robot, a cop that is robot that would be able to be effective in fighting crimes. And so there was one person who was shot and in the midst of dying. And so they got this person and they experimented, experimented on this person by, you know, taking the body and then putting uh, the machines inside this, this person so that it controls. Although this person coma na, so he cannot think, but there is that a nervous system, okay, the system that helped him to think, helped him to act. And so they will uh, program everything that they want this cup to do. And so he became a famous cup because he was effective in fighting against crimes. And at the end, okay, they find out, you know, in the middle, you know, this Robocat, one day uh, something happened and he regained consciousness. So he have his own thinking aside from the system, that uh, the, the, the machine that is in his body. And so as he was trying to find those bad people, okay, fighting crimes, he, at the end, he found out that, you know, the boss of those uh, criminals is the CEO of the company. And so when he went to the company to, uh, to, 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 to arrest these uh, criminals, but when he got there, he was not able to do anything. Why? Because in the program was written that, you know, he cannot touch or harm any members of the board or any members that it belong to this company. And so this CEO belonged to this company. And that's why he want to arrest, but he cannot. He want to shoot him, but he cannot. And so he could only do what this person want him to do. Okay? So he is being controlled by this person because of the system. And so there was one scene when they were in the conference room. And so when they were confronting, and one of the board the head of the board was also there. And so the head of the board knows that, you know, the head of the criminals okay, is this CEO. But she cannot do anything about it because this person control, okay, young Robocop. And so suddenly this uh, uh, head of the board did one thing. And he shouted and he said, you are terminated. Okay, you are fired, he said to this CEO. He said that you are fired. 
And after speaking, you are fired. You know, Robocop find out that he was not restrained anymore because he was not under the control of this person because this person is out of the company. And so that is where he was able to arrest or even kill this person because, you know, this person does not control him anymore. That he was released by this person. My brothers, sisters, you know the same thing with our lives. When we were not yet Christians, we are under the power and control of Satan, of sin. And so whatever what he wants us to do, you know, we followed. But when Jesus came and died for us, we had been released from this power so that we could always live a different kinds of life. A life of fullness, a life of joy, a life that is fulfilling, a life that is according to the purpose of God in our lives. And so this is what Jesus has done on the cross. Okay? And so not only that he gifted us with his own life, he is available and help resources is available for us. Second, he released us from the power of sin so that we could be able to stand, we could be able to do what is right. The third thing that Jesus has done for us in verse 12, not only he used circumcision to tell us something that had happened in our lives. In verse 12 to verse 15, this is what he said. He said, having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through your faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead, when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. Having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us, he took it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Here the Bible tells us that, you know, we have been buried with him through baptism and we have been raised up with him through faith in the power of God. What raised Jesus from the dead is the power that comes from God. And in the same way, when we were baptized, it is as if we are buried with him in, our de in dead, but we rise up again with a new life that comes from God. And it accompanied the power of God that is in us. That is why when we have this power and when we have this victory at the cross, Jesus, in verse 15, he said, he having disarmed the powers and authorities. Now, what is this power? The power of sin, the power of death. Okay? And so he disarmed the powers of authorities. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. The word triumphing, what does it mean? Triumph was the victory parade given for conquering generals when they returned in Rome. Okay? So that in the victory celebration, the defeated enemies bound in chains. They were dragged through the city. Then came the conquering generals riding on a chariot and receiving all the praise of all the people who are looking. And so here, God through his cross displays something to us that our enemy has been disarmed and that they have no power over us. Not only that they have no power over us, that we have been given the power of Jesus so that we can always come and uh, we could always be victorious as we fight all our enemies, no matter it is against our flesh, no matter it is against Satan, or no matter it is against the power of this world or the values of this world. Okay. And so the third thing that we see from this, from Jesus, uh, from baptism, rising up from his death on the cross, is that he empowers us to victory against our enemy. So that, you know, our enemy has already been defeated they have already been dragged before us, before people, so that we are fighting from victory. Not for victory, but from victory. And that power has already given to us. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is the power that has been given to us so that we will be able to win against the devil and against any enemy that comes to fight against us. When the Chinese communists overran mainland China in the 1940s, you know, there are thousands of workers of uh, China Inland Mission, the uh, sending mission that is there, who are trapped behind the bamboo curtain. Okay? And so, uh, China Inland Mission ordered the greatest evacuation of all missionaries in history, that all those missionaries should evacuate. But 
no one knew who would be allowed to live. So they could apply, but they don't know who would be allowed to live. Now, there was one missionary by the name of Arthur and Wilda Matthews. And so they applied for exit visas, and they waited for okay, the uh, communists to allow them to live. Okay. But days turned into months, and emotions become like stretched rubber. At length, Arthur was summoned to the police headquarters, where a Chinese official not only uh, gave them permission to, to, to live, but he tried to recruit him as a spy for the communists. So he said, why not you came become a spy? And then we will give you good things. We will let you live, live and then we will uh, give you a lot of mga, 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 uh, mga gifts okay, and rewards that you would do. And so day after day, he would be called again and again with several days. Okay, he would come and they would pursue him to become spies for the communists. And so every evening when Arthur went home, you know, after when his police, when he went home, he would always notice a large poster on the walls throughout the city. And their names would be there. All the names that will be executed the next day. Okay? And some of them, the names are the names of those, uh, some of those missionaries. And so, when he went home, he heard shots. Okay? And he knows that there would be someone who uh, had been executed. And so he started to be afraid and then he would start to think, what would happen to my wife and my children if I will be killed and I will be executed? And so the pressure started to mount out in him that, you know, he was in the verge of giving up and then uh, agreeing what the communists want, okay? And so it reached a peak wherein when he was called again uh, to the office and as they continued to pressure him, okay, he shoot back, he shout back, and he said this. He said, you know, to do as you ask would be a treason to the cause of Christ because I am not Judas. I cannot betray my nation, I cannot betray my people, and I cannot betray all those Christians. And so after saying this, he was dismissed. And uh, the next day he was expecting that, you know, his name would come out in the execution list. That evening, Arthur and Wilda, they were overwhelmed with fear. And so they knelt down with their kids at the kitchen and they cried out to the Lord. And they said, Lord, speak to us. And as they were praying, God, bring upon them a verse from uh, Isaiah 49, verse 25. It says, the prey of the terrible will be delivered. For I will contend with him who contends with you and I will save your children. And so with this promise, they rose to their feet and their hearts will overflow with confidence and joy. And they said, we have God's promise. Okay? And uh, that we are not the prey of the terrible. We are the prisoners of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that God is going to save us. The next Sunday, as a Christian gathered together, Arthur shared with them an experience of what he felt because of the pressure and how God has answered him from Isaiah 49, 25. Okay. And he used this passage to preach his sermon, not knowing that it will be his last sermon. Because after that day, miraculously, he doesn't know why, but the communists allowed him to leave the country. Okay. And he exits the country and he experienced deliverance. And he know one thing. It is because God has overpowered his enemies and that God has given him the victory so that no matter what comes, they were able to stand and they were able to win. My brothers, sisters, I don't know what kinds of struggle that you are experiencing right now. But you know, in Christ, we have been given this fullness and that we are complete. And whatever we need, Whenever we come to the Lord, we could always experience victory. We will always experience a release from the power of sin. And all our need is provided by God. Because in Christ, we are complete. So why not let's come before the Lord right now. As we come to pray and respond to Him. God said that we are complete in Him. 
God said that we have been given a fullness in Him. So that whatever is our need right now, whatever is our struggle right now, all our needs, all that would be able to help us live out a satisfying and fulfilled life is found in Jesus. If we could only come to Him and draw near to Him, in Him there is power, in Him there is deliverance, and in Him there is provision. Why not let us take this time right now to pray for some of the things that is in our hearts, the burden that is there, the fear that is in there. Okay. Whatever we lack in life right now, and let us ask the Lord to complete us, to fill us with His fullness right now. Let us pray. let us come before the Lord in prayer again Father as we come before you Lord we thank you once again knowing that whatever is our circumstances whatever that we are going through and even whatever we feel but the truth is that Lord we are complete in you that you have given us the fullness of life that whatever needs we have right now no matter it is a physical needs it is an emotional need or it is a spiritual need that all is available, Lord, in you. And that your grace is more than what we need right now. Father, as we bring to you, Lord, all that is in our hearts, we just pray right now, Lord, that you will touch our hearts. That we will give us, Lord, a new faith to realize that we don't need other things. We don't need other people we don't need to strive, Lord, in order to experience a fulfilled and satisfying life. But when we learn to come to you, to trust in you, Lord, and to draw near to you, in you, the fullness is available. May today, Lord, you set us free from all this burden. May right now, Lord, you give us, Lord, the joy that comes from you and the strength, Lord, okay, to face and to pursue, Lord, the life that you want us to do and the mission, Lord, that you have given to us in this coming months, Lord, even in this coming years. Today, once again, Lord, we commit to you. We surrendered everything, Lord, to you into your hands. And we thank you for all that you have done for us at the cross. Today, we are going to remember what God has done for us at the cross by coming to the communion table. Why not right now let us prepare our hearts as we partake of the bread and of the cup. Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a covenant in my blood, and do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until I come. Why not let us come before the Lord in prayer once again? Father, we come to you, Lord. We thank you once again for what you have done for us at the cross. And through your death, Lord, we have received a life that comes from you. We have been released, Lord, from the power of sin. 
and that we have been given victory, Lord, against our enemies. And today, Lord, we want to partake of all this grace that is available for us this morning. May you once again forgive us our sins, cleanse us, Lord, that we will be able to partake, Lord, a blessing and a grace, Lord, that is special for us this morning. We thank you, we praise you, Lord, and this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, may we prepare our uh, bread and our cup as we come to remember what He has done for us. The bread represents the body of Christ which has been broken for us. Let us all partake of the bread. The cup represents the blood of Jesus that had been shed for the forgiveness of our sin and that has bring healing grace upon us. So why not let us all partake of the cup. Okay, let us pray once again. Father, as we come before you, Lord, we thank you once again for the grace, Lord, that you have given to us this morning. Knowing, Lord, that you continue, Lord, to supply all our needs. And may, Lord, you continue to strengthen us, strengthen our faith. Give us, Lord, a faith to trust in you. And release us, Lord, from all those things that has been hindering us from growing, Lord, to be more and more like you. And experiencing, Lord, the fullness of life that you have given to us. Once again, Lord, we come to you as we receive, Lord, your blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon each one of us until the day that Christ would come back and bring us into His glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. May you experience the fullness of God this coming week by knowing what God has done for us. And so as we end today's service, okay, may you experience the peace and the joy that comes from God. And uh, we'd like to see you again next week. And good day.